I think I became a physicist because to me, physics was the most fundamental of all the sciences. It deals from the very small quantum physics, elementary particle physics, right up to astronomy, which encompasses the entire universe in one science. So I went into physics thinking I could find the most fundamental answers. And I enjoyed it. And I certainly was very much taken with being a physicist. I met beautiful people and I learned a lot. But somehow, in the back of my mind, there was always something missing. And I couldn't really put my finger on it until one day, when I was a graduate student, I was looking into quantum physics. And it has a very interesting property. In quantum physics, when you perform an experiment, you can't tell what the result will be. So let me put it in simple terms. If you toss a coin, you can predict, using the theory, that it'll be either heads or tails, 50% heads, 50% tails, and you can say when you toss it, what the outcome will be. In quantum physics, you can't do that. You can't go past the 50%, 50% part. So what is the answer? What's missing? Well, back in the late 1920s, a physicist named John von Neumann, who later on went on to become a very, very instrumental in developing the modern computer, back then he was a quantum physicist. And he said, you know what's missing? Consciousness. And when I read that, I thought, can't be. How can consciousness be related to a science which deals only with the material, only with matter, time, and space? And consciousness is not material. How can that possibly be? And yet here was one of the greatest physicists of the 20th century saying consciousness cannot be ignored in an experiment. So I was kind of looking, where do I go from here? And one day, I discovered the science of meditation. And I purposely use the word science because to me, meditation is strictly a scientific process. To be scientific, a process has to be such that when you perform the experiment, it can be reproducible and you have to do it without any bias at all, if at all possible. You can't say, I think I'm going to have such and such an outcome because then you're biasing your experiment and you're doomed before you even start. But meditation isn't like that. When you close your eyes and you begin to look within, you're a neutral observer. And all you do is look and watch and see what happens.